Greetings, Retro Zoltan here. Well, the polls have spoken and you really want me to take a look at the G7. Don't worry, for those that wanted me to look at the Ambernick, I'll be looking at that next. I have a feeling I'm going to need a palate cleanser. <laughs> So, I present to you the G7 Game Box, not to be confused with the Android based Game Box G7, which is an entirely different animal. I always get discouraged when I see a name like this, but in the very least, they are labeling it with a letter and a number, and not just Game Fun or something. Also, the look of this thing alone, in a weird way, reminds me of the G5, a disappointing handheld I came across a year ago. So, who makes this thing? No one's claiming responsibility, and it's not Pow Kitty or JJ Fun, and definitely not Ambernick. So who after a lot of digging and a lot of Google translating, I followed the sales trail all the way back to a company called Huan Uya, who basically manufactures and supplies to resellers all around the world. And coincidentally, they also supply the dreadful G5. Because of this, my expectations are pretty low here. But let's give this thing a run for its money and see what we can do with this thing. So let's start with the box, which is included at least. There isn't too much exciting here, but it does look enticing enough to open it anyway. Inside has a few expected goodies. There's the handheld itself, an old school video audio cable to connect to your TV, a recharging cable, as well as a controller to which I'm assuming can only be used for the second player and two player games. The G7 also comes with a little instruction booklet that tells you general things like all games work different, so good luck, that sort of thing. The G7 comes in four different vibrant and enticing color combinations. Your choices are a pastel green, which I received, a baby blue, a subtle gray, and a pink one, which I swore I ordered. I see you're a fan of pink. Salmon. The colors aren't that great in my opinion, but not as nearly as important as the form factor. And to be honest, I really do like the shape of this thing. It's fairly thin and oddly enough, comfortable in my hands. The buttons, however, feel horrible and have what I can only describe as a recycled kid's toy feel. They're very mushy, and I'm guessing these aren't going to work very well when I start using them. The start and select buttons are okay, I guess, but if you've ever held a Nintendo product ever in your life, you're going to feel those buttons are reversed. Not a huge deal. The one in the middle is a reset button, which will instantly get you back to the main menu. The D-pad, or what the box labels arrow keys, is a strange disc that doesn't feel too horrible, honestly. Curious how this is going to work during gameplay. The bottom rocks a micro USB charger port, which also acts like a controller port as well as an AV port. The top has an on-off switch and the side has volume controls. There is no SD slot present, which is a shame, but expected. And it has a speaker in the front at least, which is a welcome sight as devices I've reviewed recently have them in the back. The Huan Uya G7 sells these in bulk for $8.50 each, or lower, depending on how much you order. If you want to pull a soldier boy, here's your opportunity to buy a thousand of these things and resell them on Amazon for $41 each. They will even do the silk screening labeling for you. Talk about profit. Damn. I hope you can sleep at night, a happy Huang. Anyway, if you want to avoid an insane markup, your best bet is grabbing one on AliExpress between $11 and $15 without too much fuss. I believe you can buy one from Huan Uya directly, even though they sell in bulk. So they may give you a stink face, but you'll get a good deal. I'll provide links if you're interested. So right away, turning this thing on is a bit jarring. The horrible menu music is blasting away as you stare at the Chinese English menu. I never thought I'd wish for a speaker in the back. The amusing thing is that you're presented with a 666 in one. Clearly this device is a demonic fama clone. 666. The devil's in the details, they say, so I'm interested in the game list here. Right away you're seeing games you're hoping for, like Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 3. There's no shame here. Nothing to shy away illegals by calling it Bear Brothers or some crap like that. If you're expecting 666 games, that's not really the truth, though. Often these systems repeat games, and this one is no different. I picked a game which I really loved, Jackal, and saw it listed three times as number 22, 334, and 646. They didn't even bother renaming these to something else. They're just, here's that game you like again, enjoy. Because of this, I'm guessing, at best, in reality, this is maybe about 200 different games, and maybe a fourth of them are really good. Performance of the games seem legit, and there are no slowdowns or overspeeding of these 8-bit Nintendo Famicom games. Controls are pretty rough, and as I expected, the buttons are rough too. The D-pad isn't horrible, but it gets a bit tiring to use for some reason. Maybe it's not comfortable enough? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's just not the best. 
There is no saving your game, of course, and when you're done, you have to push the reset button and it goes back to the menu again. Your volume level, however, is reset back to ridiculous and you have to choose your language again and volume level. And honestly, that's what drives me nuts about these systems. For the love of God, Huan Uya, please, I beg you, go into your programming code and find the line that says default volume equals 100 and reduce it to 30, please. I can picture a kid getting this for his birthday, sneaking it into bed to play it when they should be sleeping, and getting busted immediately. And don't bother with repeating the games. Just put them in alphabetical order, please. Well, whatever. So is it a good system? Hardly. It's just good to feed on those who haven't seen this sort of thing before. Maybe grandparents parents using Amazon getting their grandkids one of those new fangled gaming systems they go on about. <laughs> Might as well throw in a copy of Snow Queen because that's the Frozen movie, right? It's a disappointment, but it's better than nothing, I guess. These Famiclone systems are usually pretty bad. And in my opinion, just a few tweaks would make this way less annoying. Avoid this, and avoid the G5 as well, for that matter. With everything I've looked at so far, Huan Uya really is at the bottom of the barrel so far. But I'm sure there's worse out there, and I'm sure I can find it. And that's all I have to say about the Huan Uya G7. Special thanks to all of you who are watching this. It means everything to me. If you like what I'm doing here, please feel free to subscribe for more. It helps me out so much. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.